Welcome. This is a tutorial on using pre-existing images or hand drawings to create files compatible with Wazer Waterjet. The first step is to download Inkscape. Inkscape is a free online graphic design software which works with all the operating systems. It's super simple to download and install. Begin by Google searching Inkscape and make sure to find the original website where you can automatically download the correct version for your device. There are two ways that you can cut single shapes out of glass. You can either search online for images or hand draw using a Sharpie. Either way you choose to source the shape, there is a specific methodology we will follow to prepare the files for the water jet. A key search term for finding the shape you want to cut is by putting name of the shape outline. For example, I wanted to cut a star outline, so by Google searching, I was able to find a huge selection of images that I will be able to cut. Once I found the outline you want to cut with the water jet, I will go ahead and copy, paste the image into a blank Inkscape document. With the design inside the workspace, I will navigate to Path, option on the top left of the window, and scroll down to find the Trace Bitmap option. This will open up a small menu on the right of the screen of options for the trace. Without adjusting any of the settings, I will click Apply at the very bottom of that menu to apply the trace on the outline of the star. You can delete the reference image. Now the trace is creating a vector path on the inside of the outline and on the outside of the outline. This will result in two vector paths. To visualize this better, I removed the fill and added a stroke color which revealed the two paths. We are not looking to cut a star outline, so one of the cut paths will need to be deleted. Going back to the top left of the screen, on the Path menu, scroll down to select the Break Apart option, which will separate the two cut paths into individually selectable entities, which now we can click on the undesired cut path and delete it by right-clicking and selecting the Delete button. Now that I have the final cut path I want to use, I want to make sure it's sized correctly. So by navigating to the top of the window, I can adjust both the width and height dimensions of the bounding box. To make sure the ratio of width and height with reference to the original image is not messed up, I toggled the lock icon to prevent it from changing during the resize. Finally, navigate to the top left corner to the file menu and click on export. This will open up an export window with all the export options on the right side of the screen. Make sure to save everything as an Inkscape SVG which will ensure the proper dimensions are preserved. The next search term to find designs online is silhouette. I googled the star silhouette in this case. Following the same steps outlined earlier, I can trace over the start silhouette and get the cut paths I need. Because the silhouette is fully colored in shape, Inkscape is only creating one vector path between the black and white of the image. Therefore, we will not need to delete or break apart the trace. Similar to the first step, we will make sure to resize and export as a Inkscape SVG. What if I wanted to draw my own shape on paper? Using a Sharpie and a white piece of paper, draw with very clear lines the design you want to cut. In this case, I used a pencil to get the rough shape of the star, and I proceeded to trace over the pencil sketch with a Sharpie. Remember, Inkscape likes clear designs with the high contrast between the white paper and the black lines. Using a scanner or my phone, I can get an image of the hand drawing into Inkscape and follow the same process to create the trace. Similar to the method for the star outline, you will get two vector paths, one on the inside of the line and one on the outside. To visualize everything, you can remove the fill and add a stroke color. After breaking apart the trace, you can delete the unwanted path. With anything hand drawn, there will be imperfections in the vector lines created. Vector lines are essentially made up of nodes which dictate the curvature and geometry. When double-clicking onto the vector path, I can expose all the nodes that make up the star design. In the case of this hand-drawn star, I wanted to make the edges more straight. I went ahead and deleted a bunch of nodes that were redundant to the shape of the star. Removing nodes removes the imperfections that the trace reproduced from my drawing. Once I was satisfied with the design, I followed the same process of exporting as an Inkscape SVG. With all the SVG files created, let's prepare the cut file on WAM. Importing all three different starts into WAM, I can arrange them how I would like to cut them out of the glass. With the G-code file ready to go, I went ahead and fastened the three different colors of glass into the Wazer cut bed and started cutting.
A lot of artists want to make intricate mosaics with multiple pieces, so we will look at two different sources for mosaic designs, one being printed patterns and the other being hand drawings. Whether it is a pattern that comes from a book or an online design that is intriguing, the process is very straightforward. Following the same steps for tracing over the single shapes, we will trace the pattern as a whole using the trace bitmap function. This will create vector lines for all the black and white boundaries. To visualize the vector paths that Inkscape creates, I removed the fill and added a stroke color. With everything that has line work, the Inkscape trace will create a border, so in this case, there was a circle I didn't need, so I went ahead and right-clicked to delete it. Separate the pieces in Inkscape to prepare them for individual export. Feel free to color in the pieces if you'd like to visualize the finished product. Then open a new Inkscape file, copy and paste each piece into its own canvas, then export each as an SVG file. Labeling each piece as you progress can make the process much easier later on. With the hand-drawn mosaic, we can follow the same process of using a white piece of paper and a fine line Sharpie pen to sketch a clean drawing of what we want to cut. Following the same steps for tracing over the single shapes, we will trace the pattern as a whole using the trace bitmap function. This will create vector lines for all the black and white boundaries. To visualize the vector paths that Inkscape creates, I removed the fill and added a stroke color. With everything that has line work, the Inkscape trace will create a border. So in this case, there was a circle I did not need, so I went ahead and right-clicked to delete it. With the final trace, I can scale the pattern as a whole to the final dimensions I wanted my mosaic to be. Make sure to export as an Inkscape SVG. I arranged both mosaic pieces in files based on the color of glass that I would be cutting them from. A G-code file was created for each color of glass. After the cuts are completed on Wazer, it's time to piece it together and admire your work.